So this video is on chapter three, D-Day number one. So on this first problem, we're gonna graph the points, negative three comma negative two and three comma negative four. So negative three, negative two and three negative four. And then we're gonna connect it with a line segment And we're gonna answer the following questions. So the first question is the length of it. So for the length of it, we're gonna draw a slope triangle. So I'm gonna draw a right triangle. This is a distance of two going across the bottom. That's gonna be a six. And then we're gonna use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do two square plus six squared equals, I'll put H for hypotenuse squared. So I'm gonna have four plus 36 equals H squared. That is going to be a 40. And I'm gonna take the square root of 40. Now we wanna start practicing reducing this nicely. So a 40 is a root four times a root 10. So I could really rewrite this as a two root 10. And that would be my length. Um, on B, the slope of the line. Now I wrote a two and a six, but you might wanna think of it as a negative two because I'm going down two and then I'm going right six. So slope is change of Y over change of X. So it's gonna be negative two over six or a negative one third. Um, the area of this, if I'm trying to find the area, okay, um, area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. That's the formula for area. So I'm gonna have my base is six, my height is two divided by two. So I'm gonna get an area of six, six square units. On D, the equation of the line that contains these points. Now, this actually is kind of nice because you can identify your, your y-intercept here at negative three. So this is gonna be y is equal to negative one-third x because that's our slope, minus three because that's our y-intercept and that will be our equation. Now on the next set of problems, all of these are dealing with right triangles. So on the first one, um, I want to focus on it being from 34 degrees. And from 34 degrees across, the five is gonna be my opposite and the X is going to be my adjacent. So what we want to remember is that tangent of an angle, let me drop that up here. Tangent of an angle, I'll just put tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. That is the formula that we want to use. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna do tangent of 34 degrees is equal to opposite, which is five, or adjacent, which is x. I am going to multiply both sides by x so that my x's cancel out here. And then I'm going to get x tangent of 34 degrees equals five. I'm going to divide both sides by the tangent of 34 degrees. And then I can put that into my calculator to find my answer, but you wanna make sure your calculator is in degrees. So let me get my calculator on here. So right now mine is in degrees. One way to check it, remember if we take tangent of 45, we should get a one. If you don't get a one, you're not in degrees, you're in what we call radians and you wanna switch it to degrees. So now I'm gonna take five divided by tangent of 34. And I have 7.4128.
And let's see, did they ask for it to be? Um, it didn't say, let's say we give three numbers after the decimal accuracy. Okay, let me get this back up again. So that means that my answer is going to be X equal 7.4128, or 413. And that will be my answer. Okay, now on B, B is actually Pythagorean theorem because we have two sides of a right triangle, we're trying to find the third side. So we're gonna do Pythagorean. So I'm gonna go X squared plus eight squared equals 15 squared. So X squared plus 64 is equal to 225. I'm gonna minus 225 from both sides. It's down here. So I'm gonna have 225 minus 64 which gives me 161. Um, and then I'm going to take the square root of 161. And the square root of 161, let's see. If I wanted to kind of get a number value, it is a 12.689, we'll say. So a 12.689. Okay, on letter C, now on letter C, this is a 45 degrees. So this is gonna be a 45, 45, 90. So in this case, I know that the tangent of 45 degrees should be one. So what that means is my X is going to have to be seven because seven over seven would equal one. So that one we can do without our calculator. Now on D, if I'm looking at this one from my 25 degrees, this X is gonna be opposite and the 26 is gonna be adjacent. So I am going to have um, tangent of 25 degrees is equal to opposite, which is X over adjacent, which is 26. I am going to multiply both sides by 26. So then this 26 and this 26 cancel out. So I'm gonna have 26 tangent of 25 degrees is equal to X. So um, I'm gonna type in 26 tangent of 25 and I end up getting 12.12, let's say four, if I'm giving three numbers after the decimal accuracy. Okay, on, let me just box that. Okay, on number three, these are similar. Give the correct similarity statement, then justify uh, and calculate the value of X. Okay, so first off, angle A is the same in both triangles. We call that reflexive. And in this case, um, they, are giving us, let's see, let's take a look at this. Um, they did not give us anything about the angle P or U. They did not say that these are um, parallel at all. Um, so we can't assume that. So we're gonna have to look at these proportions. So what I'm gonna look at is, let me just kind of pull it focus. So if I look at this whole side here, this whole side is 22. This side here is 12. So let's say I go 22 over 12. And that reduces down to, if I divide both by two, 
11 over 6. So let's see if I look at the other side and I'm looking at this 3. And I am looking at this 3 um, plus 2.5. So that is going to be a 5.5 over 3. And let me um, change both of these to decimals. If you if you notice 11 over 6, I could divide top and bottom by 2, not because 11 is divisible by 2 nicely, but I know that half of 11 is 5.5, so they should be the same. But let me put them in my calculator and show that we do get the same decimal. So if I take 11 divided by 6, I get 1.83 repeating. And when I do 5.5 divided by 3, I get the same 1.83 repeating. So that means that those sides are proportional and I have an angle. So this is going to be by side angle side similarity. Okay, again, did not know anything about the angles, did not know that the lines are parallel. So I'm using um, side angle side. So now triangle PAL is going to be similar with triangle UAS. And then they wanted us to find X, okay? So a couple ways I could do it. I could set up a proportion, but at this point, I honestly know that if I take any sides of the smaller triangle, PAL, and I times them by 1.83, I am going to get the bigger triangle. So what I can do is I can take this side that I know 10, and this side here that I'm trying to find X, and I know that if I take 10 times 1.83 repeating, or if I just leave it as 11 over 6, that way I can put it in the calculator without having to do like a repeating decimal. That should give me my x. So I'm going to take 10 times um, 11 over 6, and I get an 18.3 repeating as my answer. Okay, on B, so looking at B, I definitely have a 27 and a 27 that are the same. Um, I have a 99 and one, and the other one I have a 54. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the math, 180 minus 27 minus 54, and C, do I get 99, like is in the other triangle? So 180 minus 27 minus 54 is 99, okay? So I do get 99. So this angle here is gonna be a 99. So in both triangles, I have a 27 and a 99. And so by angle angle, these are going to be similar. And just in terms of matching things, S goes with O, I goes with J, and then N is gonna go with B. And I'm trying to find X. So I'm trying to find this side, okay? And that side's going to correspond with this side. And then I'm going to have to use a side I know. So a side I know from this triangle is a 21. And 21, which is between my 27 degree and my 99, so has to be here. So my 21 and my 6 go together. So now I need to set up a proportion. So let's say I do x over 3.37 is equal to 21 over six. And I'm gonna cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I'm gonna multiply this together, which is going to give me a six X equal. And then I'm gonna multiply this together. And so when I take 
Um, 3.37 times 21, I get a 70 point, oops, Diane yeah, Highway. I get a 70.77. I'm gonna divide both sides by six. And so when I divide both sides by six, I end up with 11.795. So this is an 11.795. Okay. Um, on number four, so looking at this, all three of this first spinners divided evenly. So they're each gonna be one third, one third, one third. On the other side, this is gonna be 180 degrees. I have a 120 degrees. And so this has to be 60 degrees. So if I'm doing that as fractions, this is gonna be 180 over 360 or one half. This is gonna be 120 over 360, which reduces down to one third. And this is gonna be 60 over 360, which boils down to a one sixth. So um, I'm gonna do an area model. Oops, try again. So let me just draw this out. So one side is going to represent um, I'll put hat, scarf, pin, and each of these is one third, one third, one third. The other one's going to be tall boots. Um, I'll put short boots. And black sandals. The tall boots is one half. The short boots are one sixth. And the black sandals is one third. So I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to take one third times one six, which is one one third times one half, which is one six. One third times one six, which is one eighteenth. One third times one third, which is one ninth. Now each of these rows is also one third, so I'm actually going to get each of these being the same as the row above. And they want us to know um, what is the probability that Cassie will add a scarf and boots to her outfit. So what is the probability she'll have add a scarf and boots? Okay. So a scarf and boots. So this is a scarf and boots. This is a scarf and boots. They weren't specifying tall or short, it could be either one. So I'm gonna add both of those up. So I'm gonna take one six plus one eighteen, which if I multiply the top and bottom of the one six by three gives me three eighteenths plus one eighteenth, which is four eighteenths. And that would be our probability. I can reduce that by two, and I can get a two over nine. Now, if you want to know what that is, just in terms of like a probability, um, two divided by nine, I'm sorry, as a percent would be 22.2. So 22.2 repeating percent, but it's okay to leave it as a fraction. 
um, on number five. Okay, so on this, we have parallel lines. Okay, these orange lines are my parallel lines. And I've got a couple transversal. I have this transversal here. And then I have this transversal here that we can be looking at. So we have a lot of stuff going on here. So it says, um, name the geometric relationship between the angles below. Also circle the relationship uh, between them. Are they equal to each other or do they add to 180? Okay, those are the situations. So C and F, okay. So if I'm looking at C and F, C and F. So C and F that I just colored right here, those are called same side interior angles. Same side interior angles. And they want to know if they are equal or they add to 180. These are supplementary, they add to 180. Okay, B and A. So if I'm talking about B and A, this is B and this is A. Together, B and A um, form a straight angle. They are supplementary, you might also say. So here, I'll write that underneath. Supplementary. And what's true about supplementary angles? They add to 180. Okay, so now if I'm talking about E and, and H, E is here, H is here. On that purple transversal, these are alternate interior angles and alternate interior angles are equal. So now the next one I'm talking about angle. Um, G, oops, hold on. Angle G, angle D, and angle H. So these are going to be adding up to 180. Okay. Um, angles. In, in triangle, add to 180 degrees, okay? So um, you might say triangle angle sum theorem, but they are going to be supplementary. Now, the next question says measure Find the measure of each angle listed. If 36 degrees is what measure of angle C is and 50 degrees is what measure of angle E is. Okay, so let's get rid of those markings here. Okay, so we know that C is 36 degrees. So this right here is 36 degrees and E is 50 degrees and E is 50 degrees. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of fill out some stuff. E and B together have to, they form a straight angle, so they have to add to 180, so this is going to be a 130. Now, A and B have to add to 180, so this has to be 50, but also A and E, angle A and E are vertical angles, so they also add to, uh, I'm sorry, equal each other. Now, if I'm talking about angle D here, angle D, I'm gonna take 180 minus 50 minus 36, because together all three of those has to add to 180. So if I take 180 minus 50 minus 36, I get 94. So this is gonna be 94 degrees. Um, now, angle F and angle C together are what we call same side interior angles. They add to 180. 
So basically I'm gonna go 180 minus 36 to get F. So 180 minus 36 is gonna give me 144. Now um, F and G together are going to form a straight angle. So I'm gonna go 180 minus 144 to get G. So 180 minus 144 is gonna give me a 36, which I also could find because these are alternate interior angles, C and G. So some of these, there's more than one way to think about them. Now, 94, 36, and H, I'll have to add to 180 because it is a triangle. But I also know that angle E and angle H are alternate interior angles with that purple transversal. So that means that this has to be 50 also. Um, 50 and I, this is going to be 30, 130 because I have to add to 180. And then 50, uh, 50 and 50 because these are vertical angles. Okay, so let's see. The ones that they want, they wanted angle J. Angle J is 50 degrees. They wanted angle A, that is 50 degrees. They wanted angle D that is 94 degrees. Um, they want angle G that is 36 degrees. And I think that's it. Um, on number six, calculate the area of the trapezoid. So a trapezoid take base one plus base two times it by the height divided by two, and that's your area. Now, I need to find um, some of this. So I need to find this height here, okay, that height there. So I am gonna use Pythagorean theorem. Um, I personally know that that's gonna be a six because I recognize it as a three, four, five right triangle. But let's say I call this H for height. Um, so I'm going to go 8 squared plus my height squared equals 10 squared. So 64 plus 8 squared equals 100. When I subtract 100 minus 64, I'm going to end up getting 36. And so H is going to be 6. Okay, so again, I had recognized as a three, four, five times that whole three, four, five each side by two. Okay, so now I'm going to use this formula. So now I'm going to take 13 plus 25 times it by six and divide by two. And let's see what I get. I'm going to press alpha y equal. And I'm going to enter it in as a fraction. So I'm going to have a 13 plus 25 times 6 over 2. And I end up with 114 square centimeters. Okay, on 7. So I have a triangle. Um, we know that the perimeter is 27, so we're going to add up all three sides. So I'm going to take x minus 1, 2x minus 4, 3x minus 4, and add them up. So let me add my x's. If I add my x's, I get a 6x. If I'm looking at my numbers, I get a minus 9 it is equal to 27. I'm going to add nine to both sides, so I get a 36. I'm going to divide by six, so I get a six. So X is six. Now they asked me if this makes sense. So let's see, let me put a six in here and that gives me a five. If I put a six in here, I get a 12 minus four, which is eight. If I put a six in here, I get an 18 minus four, which is 14. So, if I'm looking at these sides, let's say I am looking at this and I'm trying to focus on, hey, does that 14 work? So what I would do using the triangle inequality is I take five 
plus eight, which is 13, and five and eight, and I would subtract it. So let me actually write as an eight minus five, and I get three. So that 14 needed to be between three and 13, which it is not. So not a triangle by the triangle inequality. Let's see, on number eight. Okay, so for this, um, I know that this angle and this angle, so I've got four X minus five is, has to equal three X plus 20. And the reason is vertical angles. congruent. So I'm going to minus 3x, I'm going to add 5, and I get 25. So x is going to be 25. And again, I did it using vertical angles. So let me put in these values. So four times 25 minus five, that's 100 minus five. So this is a 95. So this right here, this whole thing's gonna be 95. And this is also going to be 95. So now um, what I'm going to do is I know that, um, if I take this 65 and this y plus 8, that they are um, corresponding angles. So I'm going to take y plus 8 is equal to 65. Again, corresponding angles. And when I take 65 minus eight, I'm gonna end up getting 57. So this is gonna be 57. And again, I use the idea of corresponding angles. Are congruent and up here, vertical angles are congruent. And let's see for Z. Um, I know that this has to be a 65 here. So I am going to use the idea that if I take 180 minus 65 minus 95, I'll get my answer. So 180 minus 65 minus 95, and I end up with 80. So my Z is 80. And the reason is triangle angle sum theorem, where basically the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so on nine, I am going to be multiplying these out. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna have a three X plus two and an X minus six. You're gonna watch your sign. So this is gonna be a three X squared, a two X, I'm multiplying. Um, my negative six is gonna multiply both of these, so that's a negative 18 X and a negative 12. So they want you to, to work this out and find the answer. So the answer is gonna be three X squared minus 16 X minus 12. This one here, x minus nine, x minus four. And notice that I put the negative right in front of the nine and also in front of the four so I don't lose it. So this is gonna be x squared minus nine x minus four x and then negative times the negative is a positive 36. Now when I combine this, I get x squared minus 13 x plus 36. Now this one, I could just distribute. 
So that's going to be a 32M plus a 40. Now on this one, what I want to understand is this is an X plus seven times an X plus seven. Okay, we want to start seeing patterns with this, but let's at first um, just multiply this out and then hopefully again, we will start seeing a pattern with this. So on this problem, I'm going to have an X plus seven and an X plus seven. I get an X squared, I get a seven X, I get another seven X and seven times seven is 49. So X squared, basically I take my X and I square it. I multiply uh, my seven and X together and I get that twice. So I double that, so I get a 14 X. And then I square my seven, I get a 49. And that will be my answer. 